I tell people the same thing. Like, you don't have to like me as a person. You don't have to think I'm funny as a comedian, but you have to respect the fact that what we're doing is important and we're the only ones that are willing to sacrifice comfort to do it. You guys are like, Josh, we can't say ginger. What's the word? Well, I'll tell you. We prefer the term cinnamon American. <laughs> I started doing the Cognitive Dissidence Tour, which is myself, Anthony Cumia, and Gavin McGinnis uh, back in June. We've had four venues cancel on us in the last two shows. You know, these venue owners, they they know who's on the show. They know everything else. Uh, they know the lineup. They know our history. But I don't think they anticipate the amount of organization and the funding and the backing that the liberal activists who don't want us to perform have. In Rutherford, it got so bad the day of when we announced the show that the activists had called the mayor's office and the chief of police because the venue was not going to cancel on us. And then what's really crazy about Rutherford is that the mayor and the chief of police then put pressure on the venue owners to cancel the show. And the owners were working with the city and working with public funding to renovate the theater. And essentially the, the police chief at behest of the mayor told them, if you don't cancel this show, then we can't guarantee that your redevelopment funding isn't gonna be pulled off the table on Monday. And he thought, if I bow down, they'll leave me alone. And sure enough, even though he canceled the show, the following Monday, there was a town hall meeting and they took his redevelopment funding off the table. So we've gone on from liberal activists convincing business owners not to host us all the way to city government officials essentially racketeering and threatening the venue owners um, if they're willing to allow us to perform and speak. We've done now nine of these shows. <laughs> we haven't had any issue of violence. No one's showing up in person to cause violence or to cause problems. This is all like cyber terrorism. And it's and the, the reason it's effective is because everybody's afraid. I mean, you can just call free speech hate speech and have people's civil rights removed. It's okay to laugh, but you're sparking hate conversation. And the concept of hate speech is its the, one of the worst marketings that we've allowed to happen in America is because anybody can sort of label ideas they don't like as hate speech. I, I love fast food. Anybody who talks bad about McDonald's, that's hate speech to me, okay? So, but the idea that I could call the mayor and go, you need to shut down this vegan restaurant because of the hate speech they're doing against McDonald's, the mayor would laugh me out of his office. And that's what's happening to us as comedians. Our reverence and our love of comedy comes from finally having that place where you can say the things you're not allowed to say. And I think people go to comedy because they want to hear the things they're not allowed to hear at work or at, at school or whatever. So it's like, we have this sort of die-hard religious belief about comedy that it's supposed to be wrong it's supposed to be inappropriate and and the opposite of what's you know considered correct in polite society that's what makes it fun that's what makes it funny and it's amazing to me is how much people want to censor comedy in that way it's this wild thing about the world we live in and that's honestly what the cognitive dissonance tour is about is about like you're not going to take our fun away um, and and now it's to the point where we're on the front lines where we actually have to fight back, you know, city government institutions to be able to have the freedom to do it. The idea that the so-called truth tellers are now playing to the man, they're sort of like reading off the company approved script. I really, what I'm afraid of is that even the best comedians in America can be corrupted. I feel like myself and Anthony and Gavin are three of the only people in this country that have proven time and time again that if it's the truth or being corrupted by money, we will do the financially stupid thing and say what we really think. You know, this idea that you cannot be successful while telling the truth is something that we don't believe in and we're fighting heavily against. I'm sort of done giving my peer comedians a pass when they sort of sit on their hands and don't say about this when it happens. This is not the America we want to live in. And if you're not willing to be uncomfortable to fight for the America we want to live in, I don't have any time for you. And we're not on the same team. And if they're successful at canceling our comedy shows, they're going to start shutting down everything that they don't like. We know that it's going to be hard and there's going to be some discomfort for us, but we believe in the fight. I mean, and we're suing the city of Rutherford, New Jersey. How's that for exercising your power, right? So 
if you guys thought you were good using your your the power of your office to prevent us from exercising our constitutional right to free speech and assembly then get ready to bear the brunt of that on a much bigger level from the other side it's, it's going to come for the comedians first and then everyone else is going to be at the mercy of people abusing their offices of power to excise their own political beliefs so where does this stop if the mayor is catholic and there's a protestant church doing something can they come in and tell the people that the protestants can't gather because they don't agree with their religious point of view it's not that different we are literally steps away from that becoming the america we all live in